Star Wars 7x7 episode 2109. Today, it's time for a Sunday conversation, and my guest this week is Mark Thompson, the narrator slash performer of many Star Wars audiobooks and a whole bunch of other audiobooks as well. Punch it! Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy and thank you so much for joining me for it. So I've had the pleasure of interviewing Mark previously at Star Wars Celebration Chicago where he was one of the guests on for the one question interviews that I do at each celebration. This is the first time I've had the chance to do a longer form interview with him and it was really awesome so thank you to Penguin Random House Audio for setting up the opportunity and Mark, as you've been hearing, you know, does an amazing job with the narration and performance of Star Wars novelizations and has been doing it for a number of years. And so we're going to talk about the Rise of Skywalker novelization in specific, but it's going to digress into, you know, related topics as well. And I'm going to jump into that here in just a moment. So before I do, I just want to say thank you, as always, for joining me for these episodes, and may the curve be flattening for you wherever in the world you may be. And now, without further ado, my conversation with Mark Thompson, the narrator and performer of Star Wars audiobooks for Penguin Random House Audio. Mark Thompson, thank you so much for joining me on Star Wars 7x7. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. This oh, is a bright excellent. spot in a dark time. Oh, goodness, is it ever. And, <laughs> uh, I am very grateful to, to have you back on the show, as we were talking about before the recording started. The last time we talked was at Celebration Chicago. It's been, yeah, quite a year since then, hasn't it? <laughs> it really has. <laughs> Oh, but on the on. brighter side of things, we had the release of The Rise of Skywalker and, of course, the novelization and the audiobook that came out with it, which is why you and I are talking today. So yes. um, tell me about this. First of all, I, I understand that the audiobook was recorded, the narration was recorded after The Rise of Skywalker came out in theater. So what was it like for you when you read the novel, you know, compared to, you know, what you had seen in the theaters and all the new material that you were discovering? It was pretty great. Um, I, they gave me the option to read the script before uh, the movie came out. Um, but I decided not to because I knew we weren't, we were going to record. I think we recorded like a couple of days after the movie came out. So I just, but oh, I, I didn't want to. Yeah. <laughs> so like they had a, they had a version of the script ready, uh, several weeks beforehand, but I just, I, I talked to the director and producer and they, they understood that, you know, I would want to experience the movie, uh, and not get spoiled. So, uh, we just kind of all agreed that that would be fine. And <laughs> so, so I watched the movie and then the <laughs> very next day just dove right in and like there was so much in the book where I was like, oh, because well, <laughs> like, you know, it just it, it really enhances and, and uh, like all like all books do there. They have the time and uh, to, to really dig a lot deeper than you would in a two hour film. So there's just there was so much in the book uh, that made just just the, the movie just gel so much more for me and just to connect so much more emotionally for me. And uh, it was so fun because I watched the movie, uh, did a marathon session and just read the book as fast as I could. And then a couple days later, went and saw the movie again um, before we went to record it. And, and, and that experience of like seeing the movie, reading the book and then watching the movie again, it just I was like con it was like pulling back all, lots of Star Wars onion layers and just like getting deeper and deeper to the core. And I was like, oh, this is slow. like there's so many things that were enhanced because of reading the book and, and doing it so quickly back to back, I think, really helped me understand things in a much deeper way. It is this uh, I mean, you obviously don't just narrate Star Wars audiobooks. You also do other work as well. Is you know, is this unlike other audio book narration projects? Like nobody said, nobody else says to you, "Yeah, you can have an extra couple of days to see a movie." And <laughs> right? yeah, that's that's pretty unusual. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, and, that's very cool. And when you're seeing it in the theaters, um, I just I have to ask. As you watch it in the theater, you know, knowing that you have 
lived with a lot of these characters for many, many years. Are you is your mind already spinning to the way that you you know might you know perform these characters uh, in the audiobook setting as you're watching the movie? Is it hard to separate yourself from you know from the track of just enjoying the movie as it's being presented to you? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I feel like the first time I see it, I'm able to just see it as a fan and just take it all in. Um, but I guess there's there's certain moments where I'm I'm thinking about okay, how am I going to do that, or 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 how like you know, I'm 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 kind of taking mental notes and and like thinking about okay, like. You know, how, how how do I want to portray that when I'm telling the story? Because I won't have the visual infrax in front of me, you know. And and when, I, you know, when I heard Babu Frick, I was like, hey, you know, like, I was like, oh, I can't wait to see that voice. That's going to be great. You know? <laughs> the droid go bye bye. <laughs> blank, 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 blank. So it was like so fun. So there's there's moments like that where I'm like, oh, that's going to be fun to play. Or, oh, that's going to be challenging. That's going to be hard. Or, you know, so, um. But I think for the most part, the first time I see it, I'm able to just really take it in. And then every viewing after that, I'm dissecting it and pulling it apart and trying to think of things and, and make notes of things. And um, but it's, it's so I guess it's a bit of a challenge, but I just love this stuff so much that it's that the first time I allow myself to just relax and enjoy it. That's awesome. And. Yeah, it's it's such a joy to listen to your narrations. It, I mean, the the love is absolutely utterly clear. It comes through so <laughs> so well every time. Um, oh, thank you. Oh, absolutely. So you talked a little bit about the recording sessions. How long does this take? I mean, you said it was sort of a, a marathon session, but I mean, what does that actually mean? Are we talking you know across multiple days, or are you in a booth for sixteen hours just you know hammering through it as as I don't want to say as quickly as as possible and make it sound like you're just trying to blow through it by any oh, no, yeah. stretch. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, in fact, I'll stop putting words in your mouth and just let you <laughs> tell me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the uh, so like the process, as far as I'm concerned, uh, is is relatively long. Like the so like it usually takes me about a week or or several days, depending on what other jobs I have during that time to, to just read the book the first time through. So I have to like, um, I have to read the book all the way through and then I, then I kind of take notes and, uh, figure out how I'm going to cast the voices and what voices I want to use for different characters and stuff like that. Obviously for a novelization that work's already been done for me because I'm, I'm just trying to key into the voices that were done in the film. Um, and then the actual recording, uh, we're usually at about f four days or, you know, uh, about, uh, depending on the length of the book. So like anywhere from, uh, four to five days, sometimes three, if it's a shorter book, but, uh, and those days are usually 10 till 10 in the morning to like five or six at night. And obviously they let me, you know, eat lunch or go to the bathroom and stuff like that. But I for the rest so. of the day, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> get in the booth, read. Um, <laughs> so like, uh, but, but you're in there, uh, you know, for, for a while and it, it takes a long time just to kind of there's a lot of stopping and starting and there's there's flubs and things like that but uh the editors make it sound seamless so mm -hmm. so it's a pretty long process and then they have to then you know do all the editing and the music and the sound effects so it's it's i think i've heard kevin thompson who's the producer director say before that uh it's usually about a month start to finish to to kind of produce it all and, and, and get it out the door but uh um, cause they usually want to release it right when the books drop, like they want the audio to come out at the same time as the book's coming out. So it's always a bit of a feeling of you're, you're kind of racing against the clock to get it all finished. But, uh, but it, it's, it's really fun and rewarding. Oh yeah. Is that a generally a month from the moment that you step into the booth or from at, from the moment you step out of the booth and you've completed it? Uh, I think which is roughly I guess only it, a I guess difference be a month. anyway, but yeah, because I, I think for the CD it might be a month from when I leave the booth. Sometimes two or three because it's like the production schedule. But they because I think that's the the CD is the one that takes is the most time consuming because they have to 
they have to finalize the mix and then they have to send it to be produced and boxed and, and, and all that stuff. So, uh, yeah. and usually they, the, the, they release the digital when that's coming out. So, um, but it's like, I think a month from when I get the script to when I, when it's finally being mixed is usually a month and then maybe add a month or two on top of that for the production and all that, like the physical production of the CDs. Got it. All right. So from your perspective, what would you say was the, the most fun aspect? I have a feeling, I mean, Babu Frick seems like it's already <laughs> yeah. up there. And what would yeah. you say is the most challenging aspect of this particular one? Oh, wow. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I think the fun part for me is, is like you said, doing a lot of the character voices and, uh, getting to do Babu Frick and, and, uh, in this one in particular playing the emperor, he was, it was such a, a lot for him to do in this one. So that was really fun. Um, and then just, I, getting to read all the extended scenes and the bonus scenes was so fun. And it was hard because I want to talk about it with people, but I'm not allowed to <laughs> so it's like, like, you know, I had, I mean, are we allowed to talk details on this? Do you know, or like, I guess the book's been out, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Anything so, you I want mean, to get into. Okay. Well just, just, you know, all the like nitty gritty stuff about, the emperor actually being a clone, like to know about that before my second viewing of the film was like, ah, you know, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you know, and all the, like, like, like the, the stuff about Lando and like, you know, you know, the idea that, you know, maybe the first order were hunting down his children and, and how that applies to, you know, that, that just made so many more motivations clear about why he might've been not involved more in the fight. And, you know, uh, the, the stuff with Luke and Leia as a flashback, like all that stuff was like, Oh, this is gold. And it's just like so cool to know all this. And, you know, and so that was like just the discovery of that was super, super fun. Um, I think the difficulty of this one, and I, I, I don't know if I'm uh, jumping the gun about, um, things you want to get into later, but, uh, for this particular recording, um, we got a version of the script before the film came out, but there were, they were so concerned about spoilers for this one that they, they left out huge chunks of the book. Um, so when we first recorded this, we didn't record, uh, the big reveal that Ray was a Palpatine. We didn't record Han Solo meeting Kylo Ren in, in the kind of forced dream thing. Wow. Uh, we didn't record the end, uh, the, any of the details of the battle of Ex Exegol, like all that stuff was left out because they were worried that someone would get an early copy of the thing and email it out or whatever. So then we, then several weeks later we came back and then recorded those scenes. So it was a, that it was a bit of a challenge. Like I understand why they did it, but it was a bit of a challenge to kind of record those things out of sequence or record them after the fact and, and plug them in. Uh, because I was constantly worried that, you know, it, tonally, is this going to fit back in or is it, you know, and remembering like, where did this emotionally leave off in this scene or, you know, so, and that all the credit goes to Paul and Kevin and Nick, because like they, they were really masterful at making sure that it really stitched together perfectly. But, uh, I remember that was a huge challenge. So we like, usually you'll record the book and then you'll come back if there's like fixes where, you, you know, you'll mispronounce something or say something incorrectly. But this time there were like two or three additional records to the primary record because we had to go back and record these scenes that weren't included in the first version of the script. So it was like so. So to try to plug those in was was a bit of a challenge. That does sound like a very particular kind of challenge. And even just from the podcasting world, I've you know had it. Uh, I've understood for years that if you're trying to record something, but you're doing it across multiple days, that just the energy level you bring changes. Yeah. And it doesn't even necessarily have anything to do with, you know, how much sleep you got one night versus another or what you're eating necessarily. It's just, right. just whenever it catches you, you, 
your energy and how it's different from one day to the next can actually affect how it sounds if you're trying to piece it all together. And so this sounds like it would be exactly that kind of challenge. Yeah, no, yeah. So, and, I, and I'd never, to, to that level or to that degree, uh, I've never experienced that before. So it was, and I, and I get why they did it because of spoilers and mm -hmm. all that stuff, but it was definitely like, oh, wow, this is really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so with some of the scenes that you did, um, you have to do scenes where a lot of different characters are talking at once. As opposed to, you know, characters, you know, just having, you know, like a two-person dialogue situation. Can you talk a little bit about what it's like to do scenes where there are multiple characters talking in at one time? I mean, does it slow you down? Is it when you're actually going through the recording process? Like, how does that affect you versus doing just straight narrative or one or two-person uh, talking scenes? Yeah, like, at first... When, when you're first trying to get into the rhythm of it, you feel uh, really herky jerky. You feel really like kind of out of sorts because the, trying to bounce back and forth between three or four or five or six, convert, you know, different characters, you, it, it's hard to do it smoothly. And you, you, you know, and at least the way I do it is when I'm taking my notes and reading the script, I'll record samples of what ideas I have for different character voices or in this instance I you know record samples of the um, characters from the film and, and we'll listen to it um, so the first several chapters I find it really slows the process down because I'll, I'll really want to nail that, that character voice or I really want to establish it and make sure it's distinct so I'll have to stop and, and listen to my sample on my phone for a few seconds get it locked in say their dialogue and then, oh, new character. Okay, wait, let me listen to that character. Wait, right. Okay, got it. Now let's go back in. But then usually about halfway through the book, you start to know those voices well enough or, or you've, you've done them long enough or repeated them long enough that you're able to start ping-ponging pretty seamlessly. And, and, and that's when it gets really fun because then it feels there's a more of a natural flow. And, um, and the perfectionist in me sometimes wants to stick with those lines of dialogue and do like multiple takes of each line because I want to get the line exactly right. Mm -hmm. But again, because we're we're fighting against the clock and you know there's a limited amount of time you have the studio for, eventually you just have to stop being so precious about everything and and you gotta just trust that it's gonna be, you know, good enough or whatever. So so um Kevin usually has to remind me of that. Because <laughs> usually like <laughs> I really want to be a perfectionist and I really want to get, you know, and sometimes it helps. Like sometimes I do, I'm able to kind of ramp up and, and get a better reading by doing it multiple times. But more often than not, he'll remind me that the conversation flows better when I don't stop and start as much because then the characters are actually reacting to each other <laughs> because, mm -hmm. uh, you, you have the, the line reading of what you did for the other character in your head right away. And they're actually responding to it in real time. And it actually sounds more natural. So even though there's a part of me that wants to go back and, and it's like, no, we didn't get it right. It's like if, if usually if I just trust and, and go with it, it actually comes out better. So but I have to be reminded of that every single time because I don't <laughs> believe it. <laughs> <laughs> and so in particular, I, I imagine that you know, the stakes for doing characters like Leia and Han and Luke in this particular audiobook might have been a little bit higher because it you know it may well be the last time that they get done i mean yeah maybe it will be <laughs> oh i know i know <laughs> you know I mean, we might get younger stories of them it's entirely possible but i mean this is certainly the last time that we will see them on screen this way so you know does yeah. that factor into how you walk into the recording booth and think about how you're performing these characters. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. Uh, anytime I had to record the big three, um, I felt that huge sense of responsibility and that, that weight of, I want to get this right. I want to, you know, find the balance of, you know, mimicking Mark Hamill and Harrison Ford and Carrie Fisher, but then, not being stuck in, you know, a certain way of doing it, but, but honoring the scene that they're in now 
and bringing my own take or my own performance to it. And so it's a constant challenge. Um, and you know, these, these are my heroes. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. you know, I, I want to do them justice. I want to do them honor. And, you know, so I, I definitely feel the weight of that, you know, but you know, it, it is that balance though. Cause like, I want to take it seriously and I want to put, give it the attention it deserves, but that weight can crush you if you focus on it too much because it, it can overwhelm you and then you get paranoid and, and you start to feel like nothing's ever good enough. And, you know, so it's a weird balance of, um, you want to take that on and treat it with the respect it deserves, but then not let that paralyze you and, and make you feel like you can't try something different or try something new or, or, or do anything, you know, so you have to kind of forge ahead, even though you are constantly second guessing everything. Oh goodness. Yeah. I can, I can just imagine. And, and I imagine it's probably similar to Ian McDermott's performances, Emperor Palpatine as well, which you, you yeah. mentioned earlier. I, I wonder, you know, is the temptation for you, Palpatine is such a scenery chewing character. Yeah. Like, you, is, do, you, do you find yourself ever going, you know, overboard into it and going, oh, I have to dial this back a little bit? I mean, yes, but because he's such a scenery chewing character, I, there, there's a little bit more license and freedom. And, you know, uh, I, I didn't get pulled back too many times on this particular one. <laughs> so I, th I think I, especially in this particular film, like he's, he's really all out there and just, you know, really relishing every moment. And, you know, so it's just, it was, it was super fun. And, and, uh, and, and I, and I, and I felt a little bit more freedom with him because of that. So. That's awesome. So as you're going through this and you're know, going through the process of, of reading the book and actually um, performing, narrating, do you have a preference for a, a term? I'm, I'm used to saying narrating or performing or, or acting out, you know, not necessarily reading or, you know, like that. But um, do you have, you know, a preference for how you describe your work? I mean, I guess I, I probably use narrating the most but i think the way i view it is is more performing like i i i view it as a one person show like i i view it as like you know as if i'm acting this stuff out and and i i've talked up in other interviews before about the the unique or specific skill that i had to develop for narrating audiobooks was was the storytelling aspect of it because the the performance of the dialogue made sense to me as an actor because those are your lines. And, and so I would kind of, when I first started, I would put a lot of attention on the lines of dialogue, but didn't really put as much attention on the narration or the, you know, kind of prose, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and so Kevin at, at one point had to stop me and said, you know, you got to make this stuff just as interesting as you're making the dialogue. Like you have to like find a way, like you have to understand like every description of how a room looks, every description of what a character is thinking. That's, that's part of the story. That's part of, you know, of, 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 of what makes the dialogue important. So you've got to give it just as much weight and just as much, you know, energy and, and interest. And you've got to find what the emotional connection is to those things. And, and that like unlocked something in me. And that really, that really opened up something for me and, and helped me a great deal. And, and so, um, I, I've, I've tried to get better at that over the years. Um, so I guess, I guess in that sense, maybe that's specific to narration, but I, I, I emotionally think of it as performing and kind of like I treat it as if it were a stage play and I were performing this on stage. So, so how long ago would you say that, that you got that note from Kevin? Uh, it was pretty early on because I think the first, it was, it was definitely during the legacy of the force series. It was either the first or second book. Oh goodness. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, it really, <laughs> it helped me a lot. <laughs> As I say, cause that's actually something that I've, I've particularly enjoyed about listening to your performances is the narration actually it was something that I oh, remarked wow. upon. I, I remember most recently thinking about it, um, you know, prior to this. Uh, your performance of Resistance Reborn and how 
during the narr- uh, during the the narrative parts, not the dialogue parts, there were instances where it sounded as though you know if you were focusing on a scene with a particular character where the narration w- you know was coming from the point of view of that character and yeah. the you know the subtlety of the intonations and the way you deliver the narrative actually you know make it sound like it's the character you know almost talking to you the character telling you the story himself mm. or herself in a way and i i remarked upon that with resistance or born most recently i was just was very impressed with how you you know, had delivered that so it's really you know, yeah so it's really cool <laughs> to hear you talk about that aspect of it and about kevin giving you that note ab- about it so yeah that's all him like he's he, he's been doing this forever and he really is a, a audiobook magician like he he knows how to like like he'll he'll say things to me like okay read that paragraph again a little bit more from poe's point of view or re- like you know like he'll he'll know how to kind of give notes that way. And, and, uh, and he, he can like say, you know, I want this line reading, like give me a slight pause between that word and this word. Cause I know what spe- uh, sound effect I want to use right there, or I, I'm going to use a special uh, music cue at that moment. So like, like while we're recording, like he'll know to, to, to do it that way. Like it, cause just in his mind, he's like, Oh yeah, I'm going to use this here. And like, you know, so he's so good at what he does. It's, it's really remarkable. That is amazing. Thank you for that additional insight too. Yeah. Um, so what I was going to ask you before I (laughs) let myself go down that sidetrack, um, for all the expanded edition stuff that you read that wasn't on the screen, is there any particular thing that jumped out at you where you thought to yourself, oh my gosh, if there was something that I could have actually seen on the screen, and this is not to throw shade at the Rise of Skywalker or anything. No, no. Not at all. Um, but just, you know, for your own, you know, personal fandom, basically. Right, right, right. If there's anything you could have seen, you could have wished or would have wished that you had seen visualized on the screen, is there anything particular that jumps to mind? I mean, there's several, but yeah, like, uh, <laughs> I think, uh, and again, it's just because of time restraints and I understand why, but like, I think the two big ones that jump out is, uh, in the book, there's the, there's a lot more to the opening montage of Kylo looking for the wayfinder. Mm. And there's this amazing scene where he meets this creature. Uh, I think it's called the eye of the webbish bog. And it's like this, like, it's almost like this giant with like a spider creature on the shoulder and it's like guarding the wayfinder and they have this really cool conversation. And and I actually heard that they actually did build that creature and, and, and maybe film that scene, but then decided not to use it. But, uh, so I would have loved to have seen that. And then I was dying. I, I this was just probably because Carrie Fisher had passed, but mm. I would have loved to see the scenes where we flash back and Luke and Leia, Luke's training Leia and Leia's like doing the handstand and starts to levitate and, and he's trying to kind of egg her on and get her maybe distract her and get her angry. But she's, you know, kind of, you know, further along than he was at that point in his training. And there's this really cool brother sister moment they have. And like, I would have loved to have seen like the de-aging stuff like that they do with like in the, in the Marvel films with, with, you know, maybe Mark and Carrie there and just, and just actually see them. Like, it was cool to have that, that quick snippet where where you see them doing the lightsaber battle, but to have them have dialogue and have that scene. And, and then the insight that gives into how Leia chooses to train Ray moving forward. It was just, that would have been so cool to see in the actual film. And I was like, Oh, but that's what you get the book for. Mm -hmm. And that's what, you know, you're lucky to have the book for that. Yeah, I I was really very grateful that Ray included that in the book. I mean, absolutely. Yeah, I can understand why it would have been difficult to do in the movie. And I utterly and completely respect the decision to say, no, we're not going to do any digital recreations of of Leia. And that, you know, would have crossed into that territory. But yeah, that's you're you're absolutely right. That's why we have the book. And yeah, it made me appreciate novelizations that you know these are <laughs> these totally. are very cool things that we get to enjoy in addition to the movie yeah and one of my favorite things that ray did in the book was i love all the stuff of like luke calling out to leia like throughout the story so like you know like he's like trying to say like leia it's time it's time you know and, like and she's wanting to hold on and, and like and all the stuff about you know, her relationship with Kylo, like it just, to me, it, it, it almost makes Luke's entrance then at the, at that moment at the end, more 
intense because you've been, you've heard his voice throughout and you, 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 you know, see him interacting with Leia and, you know, so that, that would have been amazing to see as well. And, and that was such a cool thing for Ray Carson to do. Uh, cause it just gives you so much more insight into the struggle that Leia is going through and, and, and that Kylo is going through and that everybody's going through, you know, it's just, it's, it's, I really, I really thought that was super insightful and really creative to, to, to think, because obviously you would, Luke would reach out to Leia. Like it may, it just makes sense. And I, I understand because of the restrictions of Carrie Fisher passing on, you couldn't have done that, but it just, it made so much sense when I read it. I was like, of course, like, yes, this is perfect. Uh, so First of all, just thank you again so much for taking the time out of your schedule to join me for this. I really appreciate it. The audiobook is out and it is fantastic. It is such an enjoyable ride. And uh, I'm so excited to find out what you're going to do next, <laughs> which I don't even know if you can you know, talk about any of that yet. And that's okay. I'm not going to put you on the spot. I just wanted to say that I've enjoyed Every single one that I've had the pleasure of listening to all the way back to, I think, um, at least in the new canon, I think you were the narrator for A New Dawn, the John Jackson Miller one that first yeah. kicked off the new canon. And I have was... very fond memories of listening to that with my son, Declan, who was uh, only seven or eight years old at the time. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's it's a beautiful thing to be able to experience. And um, Aww, so that's you, awesome are you know a part of you know a very special memory that i have with him as well so um thank you for that as well Aww. and thank you so much for your time here today i'm so appreciative and anybody who wants to know more about um the work that you do uh or to want to connect with you online or on social media where should they go uh on twitter and instagram i'm known as captain ehud uh, and then on Facebook, I'm just Mark Thompson. So, and I have a website, markthompson.net, if you ever want to check that out. Excellent. That's uh, Mark with a C, of course. And I yes, will... thank you. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and I will link I to all forget. of those in the show notes. Oh, you always forget. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How funny. Uh, well, again, Mark, thank you so much for your time today, and thank you for the wonderful performance of the Rise of Skywalker Expanded Edition audiobook. We really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. It really means a lot to me. And, and thank you to all the fans. They're, they're so expressive. And, and all of your encouragement, just I take it with me in the booth every single time. So thank you, guys. This podcast is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox. It is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other related Star Wars items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2019 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.